and oh, Lord, okay. I think most people are pretty much zoomy people, but just a reminder, please mute if you can, just because your background noise may interfere with somebody's ability to speak up. But if you want to speak up, please feel free just to pop your hand up or unmute yourself. Um, this is a real fluid, pun intended, discussion. So um, it'll be really, it, it's meant to be fun. So how many of you, before you saw the notification, and excluding those who know me, um, have ever heard of Pleiadian Earth Astrology? Okay, so a few of you are somewhat familiar to it. Um, my disclaimer is I'm not an expert. I'm still learning a lot about this. So I'm coming at it from a, a very um, high flying point of view. And if, if somebody is quite the expert, please feel free to jump in and, and contribute to the discussion. So that would be uh, awesome. So um, a lot of what, what this comes into is, you know, we live in this, this 3D world of linear time. And we have this, 3D world that everything comes before, comes after, past, present, future, and all of that. And I'm sure many of you in this world have probably felt time really isn't linear. There's a lot of spiral energy aspects to it. Um, and that's what the Pleiadian uh, astrology wants us to understand, is how to integrate these different energies on a regular basis in a way um, that we understand that one doesn't come before the other after the other. It, it all interconnects in terms of a spiral. Um, and, and there is some uh, connection to uh, sidereal astrology. There's some planetary influences on the different uh, Pleiadian energetic uh, descriptions. And we'll go into a little bit of that um, and look at some of the historical aspects to it. I'm going to talk about the differences between universal and earth energies and how those correlate. And then we'll explain a little bit how they work on a daily basis and then uh, personal charts. So that's kind of the broad overview. Um, so, and, I, and I'm going to refer to my notes because I don't have a lot of stuff memorized and I work full time doing other things. So forgive me if I keep glancing down. But um, so in our human experience with time not being linear, part of that is because it, it, it is a separating factor, separates us human to human, separates us human from nature. And part of that is, is we're here to have the earthly experience, to go through these processes of duality and polarity uh, as part of being human and, and the ascension process. Um, and, and I would imagine quite a few of you are quite familiar with that. Um, but the, these energies are based on the 260-day cycle of Venus. We'll go into that a little bit later. And then it has a lot of roots in the Mayan culture and the indigenous uh, native cultures as well, uh, which I will talk about that in a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing to recognize is the sooner you align yourself with these energies and really um, understand how they work on a, a regular basis, the sooner you can connect to the universal energy of the cosmos. And if there isn't a more important time to really tap into that, it's now. Um, so really working with the energies as opposed to working against the energies. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that as well. Um, and then we're also imprinted in the womb as we're becoming human in this experience um, with these different wave frequencies from these different uh, Pleiadian energies that are described. So, so, and, and time, as we all know, is, a, is an artificial construct, a way for us to define in our human experience in a language that our human brain understands. Um, and it, it's not always a good description of what we're going through, but we have to have some way to um, categorize and qualify and, and have the language around it as a human. So um, there are 13 universal energies. Okay, and the, these are the, your cosmic energies. These are the energies that we do to connect to the, to the cosmos. Um, and it's a way for us to harmonize with the universe. And again, there are 13 energies that are in a spiral format, but we have to give them a number and a name so that we have a way to define them in the human experience. Um, and there it's, Again, they're not linear, they're spirals. So even if I say, you know, today's energy is a one universal energy and four days from now is a four, that doesn't mean that one goes away and four comes into play. I mean, they, they all work together in a, in a uh, integrated kind of way. 
And then we have 20 Earth energies. And again, they're named and numbered as a way for us to understand as humans what, if I say today is a 13 exploring, then we can put some words to that and understand how do we integrate that energy as a human being uh, in a way that we work with it. Um, and then the Earth experience, of course, is based on dualism, self and other. And um, these things come from the Pleiades and they are recognized, you know, again, in the Mayan and indigenous cultures, especially the Cherokee culture um, as well. Um, and when we work with this dualistic experience toward unity, then this is the true evolution of our humanity. And the sooner, again, that we embrace that, the sooner we can be ascended beings and united with the cosmos. Um, so this is where, uh, Ike, you're going to jump in and talk a little bit about the historical connections between the Pleiadian astrology and the Pleiadian um, belief systems, as well as the, the different cultures. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, that was good, by the way, Julia. I was like, I, did everybody, was anybody on board? Oh, I took my thing out, so I didn't interrupt. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was good. Everybody kind of was following along. Yeah. It's pretty exciting because there, there are the 13 and they do talk about, don't they talk about, I have it on my Kindle, but they talk about a fucus in here too as well, right? 13 zodiac signs, right? Yep. This book. Yep. Yeah, so it mentions that. So, um, so I'm going to share my screen and just show you, just, just show you my process. When I, when I hear information like this, um, you know, I like to double check things and stuff, right? So I go to my handy, um, my handy book called the Bible. So <laughs> the Bible mentions the Pleiades. So then you know it's real because the Bible wants to kill astrologers, but then they mention Pleiades. So you know, okay, we're on to something. All right, because if the Bible, people in the Bible want to kill you, then you know you're doing something good. So anyway, so right here, Job 38, 31, there's all these, um, there's all these references. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, right here, 38, 31, it says, can you bind the chains of the Pleiades or loosen the belt of Orion? Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons or lead out the bear and her cubs? So this is, if you look at the Bible, Job 38, 31, this is in there. Okay, so, so that's how old the Pleiades, the Pleiades are, right? That's how old the connection, our connection to the Pleiades are. And if you go through history, you'll see that as well. I'm going to share a few books that, that in there, but I want to show you what's really happening here. So we know in, we know in sidereal astrology, and then we also know the Mayan cosmology, we have that 13th Bakhtun. You remember the 2012 fell on the 13th Bakhtun, which they called the end of the Mayan calendar? It was just because that was the end of this cycle, beginning of the new cycle. And that 13th Bakhtun is when the sun on the, on the uh, winter solstice was conjunct the galactic center. And pretty much all it marked was, we are now going to start going into to ascension, the ascendant, to the light, to the years of light, to the light, you know, to consciousness. Our vibrations are going to raise. And that's where we have all these prophecies coming in. So the star beings are guiding us. So everywhere you look, you're going to see that. Like, right? So the star beings are guiding us, and they all have this look, which is like blonde, blue eye. You know, they look humanoid. They are cosmic cousins. They're telepathic. They communicate with us. So all that sounds like hooky pooky, right? And we like to believe it, but but science sometimes you have to look to see what's going on in that realm. So we already turned to the Bible. So we already know that existed way back then. Then we look, this is a photo of what's happening now, and I'll show you a NASA photo. This is what they call the photon belt. See, now this is, has to do with also the processional cycle, okay? Because we have the ascending 2,000 years of light, 10,000 years of darkness, 2,000 years of light on this end, 10,000 years of darkness. That's the processional cycle. We rise and we fall. That's why we keep track of time. That's, that's where we get procession of the equinox. We're marking our, our journey through the zodiac, which takes 25,920 years or 26,000 years. Some say 24,000 years. So, but if you add this up, this is 24,000 years. 10,000 darkness, 10,000 darkness on one side, 2,000 on one side, 2,000 on the other side, right? So 
if if you follow that if you follow that movie the lost uh what was it called the um well he wrote the book the lost star but it's called the great year by walter Kutenen. they say this the processional cycle is actually twenty four thousand years because we speed up as we get closer to the binary stars of of um either sirius or alcyon alcyon is is this middle star right here in the pleiades right so this is the pleiades star cluster right here and this is our solar system the pleiades are already inside of this photon belt we are just heading into the photon belt which marked the whole 13th baktun meaning that we're going into the age of light now which is why we have this heightened consciousness which is where the conspiracy theorists come with the chemtrails blocking out the rays of the sun because the rays of the sun interacting with this photon belt is supposed to raise the consciousness of the solar system. And that's what's being blocked right now. So um, let me go back. I think it's backwards. So this is what the Pleiades look like. I don't know how many people have ever seen the Pleiades, but you can see they have, their stars have wispy clouds around them because they're inside of this wispy photon belt. It's highly charged particles. Now, if you, if you research and you look into what NASA is saying, NASA is admitting that we are in this, in this place. Here's the image. This is from NASA. So here we are. This is our sun, this little box right here. And this is the blown up version. But right here, this, the local interstellar cloud, that's our cloud. That's our heliopause. That's what it's called. That's what it's called, the heliopause. We're heading into this big thing called the local bubble. And NASA is referring to this, saying, oh, yeah, we're passing through a patch of space that we didn't know existed, and it's just cloud dust. It's a bunch of, like, particles and dust. And our sun is passing through there now, and it's actually causing heat. So they're, they're admitting that, but they're not saying it's part of the Palladian prophecy of raising consciousness and the vibration, even though all the ancients refer to that, right? So... So even in, in the book, the Palladian book that, that, um, that we're referring to, it talks about the Dogon tribe. And that's where we get the serious mystery. The Dogon tribe talks about the, the, the ones from the stars, the Pleiades, and their, and their symbolism that matches the same symbol, symbolism as Egypt. So all, all of these references, even all of this, like the Native Americans, the Cherokees, the, the, um, the, uh, the Hopis, they all connect to, to, they all have reference to the Pleiades. Even, even, the, even the Mayans, all of the monuments like Chichen Itza connects to the Pleiades at a certain time. It rises above at, at, at midnight and that marks their new year. So there's so many cultures that are referencing the Pleiades as our enlightened con conscious cosmic cousins. So now we're tying this into our astrology practice that acknowledges the number 13 because the number 13 is that it's a, it's the 13th zodiac sign that we work with that is supposed to be taboo but we know it's a fucus right so so yeah so anyway so that's my spiel for, for you julie about crossing pleiades with ancient cultures so yeah well and it also ties into you know you have this um 13 uh, universal energies and you know think about the fact with the 13 zodiac signs but also um, the lunar cycles you know yeah, we right. have 13 lunar cycles in the year so you know and, and again the divine feminine energy and, uh, and all of that so it's there there are some um, real interesting parallels and connections uh, to the historical references um, and there's a lot of information out there that you can you know explore on that so um, so, it, but the Pleiades really want us to understand and embrace that 13th uh, cycle of energy because we dismiss that to our own detriment. And, and that is part of our enlightenment process is to embrace that 13th energy, the divine feminine energy and uh, be at one with the lunar cycles. So um, somebody in the chat asked a question about when the Bible was written and I found on Google while um, Ike was chatting, I, I posted in there what I found. You know, whether that's accurate or not, I don't know, but that's that's what I found. Um, and just a reminder for anybody coming in late, please uh, mute while we chat, but I'm happy to um, take questions if you guys wanna just pop in and unmute. Um, so going back to the earth energies, again, they're the 20 energies that we uh, look at as earthly beings and how we can use those energies in a way to connect to the cosmos. And so, so a lot like uh, 
sidereal astrology, there's different categories for these different energies, just like we have houses, we have signs, you know, and those kinds of things. The earth energies have what are called levels of consciousness. So they're individual, community, global, universal. So we have 20 energies. The first five are your individual energies. And I'll, and I'll break this down in a little bit. And then your next five are your um, community energies. Because remember, it's a spiral energy. You're moving from the individual into the community. The next five are your global and then your universal energy. So each singular energy has an identified uh, level of consciousness, okay? Um, and, and it's how we feel them differently at, at each of those different levels. Um, and that actually plays into your birth charts as well. And then we also categorize the 20 earth energies into the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. So while the um, earth energy levels of consciousness go one through five, six through 10, and so forth, going from individual all the way up to universal, the cardinal direction do it differently. They do it across. So um, you would start with, say, east as number one. North would be the second one. West would be the third one. South would be, the, I'm sorry, east, north, south, west. And then it starts back again with number five being east. So that's kind of a spiral too. So you have this, this vertical energy and then you have this, this horizontal energy, if you will. Um, and the thing is, is they rotate counterclockwise, the spiral energies with the five earth energies identified again in each direction. And um, this counterclockwise flow follows our solar system's planetary movement too. So again, it's harmonized with that. Um, and then again, they flow continuously from one to the next. And no one energy is better or greater than the other. It may feel like it is based on the human words we place on it, but it's not. They all have to interplay with each other in order for enlightenment to occur. So don't put any value on the idea that one energy is a number two and the other energy is a number 19 especially when you look at your birth charts. That doesn't necessarily mean that the two is a lower person than a, a 19, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and then there's also an underlying piece that goes with the cardinal directions. There's colors associated with it. So east has the color red for movement. Um, north is white for truth. South is blue for trust. And west is yellow for growth and abundance. And when I go through the different energies, I'll, I'll play, I'll pull that in a little bit more in detail. Then last, the last layer is a planetary or celestial body association with each one of the energies. And those don't have any like linear or vertical or horizontal or vertical association like the levels of consciousness and the cardinal directions. They're, they're somewhat randomized in that it connects to the actual energy of that earth energy. Um, and so the, the, and the celestial bodies could be a planet like Neptune. It could also be an asteroid like Eris. I mean, uh, um, like um, Chiron. So it could be a dwarf planet like Eris. It could be uh, Maldek, which was a uh, planet that exploded, basically. So I'll, I'll play into those as well. So it's interesting how, again, each energy, there's such a story behind each energy. So it's, it's really rich when you start putting it all together which is why I don't have it memorized. I mean, it's not, it, you know, the, the sidereal astrology, you kind of hear it over and over again and you start understanding, well, the energy of Taurus and the energy of Neptune and the energy of Venus and all of that. And then the fourth house and the 12th house, you know, it's a language and it takes some time to become fluent in it. Um, so it, it, it's great to just kind of keep looking into how all of these energies work together. Um, the other thing too is, again, we talked about Venus. There's a, a connection to the Venus star. And um, I'm gonna pull up one picture here. It's not the best picture, but it's in the book. So I'm gonna do a share screen. You did the share? Yep. Okay. So this is, this is the um, energy of Venus as a five-pointed star. So, uh, and each point of the star represents the particular energy uh, of those directions too. And you notice there's archangels associated with them as well. So there's a very strong correlation with Venus. And the other thing to remember is the Venus um, orbit cycle is a 260 day cycle, approximately nine months, gestation, lunar, feminine energy. Think about that. 
And if you take the 13 universal energies and multiply it by the 20 earth energies, that equals 260. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so there's a direct correlation with, with the numerological piece of it too. And then the other one I'll share is, um, and then Ike, if you wanna speak a little bit more about this, so this is the, the, the Venus dance and how it actually does its orbit. So I'm gonna to defer to my expert on that part of things so he can bring in how Venus actually moves. Well, I'm not the 100% expert. I have that tattooed on my arm though. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, yeah cause <laughs> that's Taurus rising. But yeah, that's supposed to be the 28th cycle uh, of the dance of, um, what is it? It's Earth and, and Venus around the sun. And that's, that's the dance that it makes. And I think it's each of these points, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it's eight years. It, it makes one of these points right here. But this is a 28 year cycle of Venus. It's called the Venus Mandala, right? So yeah. And it's just another one. I mean, there's this book, if you want, I have it here. It's all around the bottom. Well, and, and as he's grabbing that book, notice the center piece here is also five pointed. You know, it's like a five point flower and it kind of goes with that star. Yeah, if you really want to get into this right here, the matrix of creation. Here, I'll take my stop share off so people can see it a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it's okay. I don't know if they can see it. But we this go. right here, the matrix of creation. It references all of the, um, all of the patterns that the, that the uh, like here's the, here's the real Venus. Like, here's the real Venus star. Like, that's right. Like, kind of intricate kind of you know all the lines and it's um if you read it here i think it's um it's a 28 year and it's related to the the whole like the golden ratio there's so much in here harmonic frequencies in here. and that's the dance between earth and venus and then if you look into earth and venus the, you know i don't know if who follows or came across you know the law of one it's supposed mm. to be this channeling that took place and it's supposed to be pretty legit. And, you know, it's like Ra, it's the group is called Ra, the Ra group, of the Ra materials. And they say that Earth, I mean, not Earth, humans in this solar system started on the planet of Venus. That was where creation happened in this solar system. And just recently, one of the, uh, one of the probes that did a crash landing on Venus and took photos on the way down the photos that they returned showed structures on Venus with right angles. And we know that, that nature does not build in right angles. So that was shown on, that's on film. So, so there's, a, there's a relationship between Venus and Earth. And there's a relationship between Venus, Earth, and the Pleiades. Right? So that's why when, when, when the, I go crazy when people say, like, the full moon is in Gemini or whatever, and it's really in Taurus conjunct Pleiades and it's magnificent and Venus is there sometimes. I mean, these are all the great things that we miss when we don't follow correct astrology in the actual sky. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's really, I think, again, it's really important because it really connects us to that, that balancing. This is what I think we're here to do in this lifetime is to really look at the balancing between the masculine and the feminine energies because we've had such an incredible imbalance. And again, that's not male, female, that's masculine and feminine. There is a difference in understanding those words, which I think I would venture the greater majority of us, um, you know, uh, understand the difference when I say masculine, feminine in terms of the, the energetic label. Um, actually, Kat was asking if you'd show that book again. Oh, Kat's, Kat's another book called like you. Yeah. The Matrix so, of Creation. One of the things we can do too is put, um, and I'm happy to, to compile this from I too, is just put a, like a little reference list together at some point. We probably won't be able to do it in the live chat at this at now because there's just so many, but yeah, yeah. Um, we can put it on the uh, Facebook and then maybe a follow-up announcement for, yeah. with the replay link. But it's all the harmonic, harmonic um, you know, sacred geometry that the planets make. It's all the sacred geometry that the planets make you know, with the synodic cycles. And yeah, it's your fantastic. Yeah, it's the symphony of the spheres, right? We heard of that, right? The harmony of the spheres, the symphony of the spheres. Is that Pythagoras that said that, you know, that 
that's what astrology is about is understanding the symphony of the spheres the music that they make because everything's vibration right and that's what we're kind of in and I'm going to note, um, Elizabeth, you made a note about furiously taking notes. There's going to be a replay available. So just go pick up the replay and you can take your notes at your leisure. You can stop, start, stop, start. So, um, yeah, I, I know that feeling. I sit there and I, uh, Virgo ascending, just saying. Um, I sit there and I use the snip tool to cut out like little bits and pieces of these share screens and I furiously try to catch up. So I learned a long time ago, if you get the replay, we're all good. So the other thing is, if anybody doesn't know this, if you go down to the bottom of the chat where there's the everyone drop down box, there's a little button that says file. And then to the right of that is a three dot ellipses. If you click on that, you can save the chat and it'll put it in a folder for you, but wait till toward the end. So if there's something in the chat you wanted to save, then you can do that as well. And, and it, just before we sign off, you can just save it. It'll give you all the text of the chat from the moment you came in. Okay, so that's helpful. Yeah, um, Tasia just pointed that out too in the chat that it takes Venus, that's what it was, eight years to make the five-pointed star, which is 13, the Fibonacci sequence. But there's something about 28. I have to look at what this was. I got, you kind of put me on the spot. But there's something about 28 years. It's a 28-year cycle. So the eight year, and then there's like another lap. And I think that's what the, the intricate circle is that we saw there. But, but um, you can look it up yourself and find it. But there's something about 28 years, then eight years, and then the five-pointed star and 13. Yeah, see again how it's all interrelated. And yeah, please, if you guys have information that you, you want to share and jump in on this, pop it in the chat or, you know, speak it up. So that's, this is, it's supposed to be interactive if there's something you um, want to share. So, so then going back to the earth energies, um, there's so there's every 13 days again we have the universal energies there's 13 universal energies so every 13 days it resets back to one so at the beginning of that cycle it's there's a, a period called the evolutionary guidance so it's sort of like the idea of a, a the new moon and then 13 days later you have the full moon and then 13 days later you have the new moon so if you look at it in correlation with um the astrology there, there is a, a an actual um, energetic energy that sets the tone for those 13 days. So um, what we do is we look at that. So you have number one is always the start for the universal energy, but because the earth energies are in numbers one to 20, it's, it's going to change depending on where we are in that cycle. So, um, and there's a daily ephemeris for the each day. So you look at the ephemeris and you can know what the universal energy is for today and what the uh, earth energy is for today. And you can look at the beginning of that 13 day cycle to see what the tone is for those 13 days. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. Let me do a share screen here. So here's what um, the ephemeris looks like for uh, the Pleiadian astrology and it's a little it's a little difficult sometimes because this first column is the number for the universal energy and the second column is the word for the earth energy. Can you make so it a little bigger? Can you expand it? Hit it hit yes, the first one time? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think okay. so. So yeah. well and I can even go a little bit bigger because yeah. we can look at kind of like where we're at right now. Okay. So we're we're right in here. Okay, so again, the first column is the universal energy, and the second column is the earth energy word. So where I get a little um, bugabooed sometimes is, I, and I always have to go look it up, is what is two in universal energy if I don't remember what that number is? And, if, um, and then if you don't know the number for the earth energy, to try to find the information in the book. So what I did is I actually did a little chart at the very beginning of that section of my book, so I can quickly take a look and see where we're at. So for this period, again, today's the seventh. So we're obviously the one is always the initiation, the beginning, but the earth energy is exploring. So, um, and I jotted down the earth energy. Um, I mean, the uh, exploring energy is um, exploring the time to present new ideas, make decisions, investigate, the desire for self-improvement in a way where we can bring together our inner self with the cosmos and move beyond the rigidity of 3D thinking to get to the bigger truth. So again, the one is initiating energy. 
And then our earth energy, our human experience is to explore in a way that we can bring our inner self and cosmos together and get beyond the rigidity of 3D. So that's the tone for the next 13 days. I mean, the 13 days starting on July 5th. Today is a three in universal energy. And I'll, go, I'll break those down a little bit more. Um, and then, which is creating. And then we have the earth energy of 15, which is seeing. Okay. Um, I'll go through this and then I'll go back and see if you guys have some questions. So again, how would you use this energy, this evolutionary guidance experience of this one exploring, you know, initiation and exploring um, to see further into this flow? So again, seeing, how, how do you see into this flow? And um, the creation energy of number three calls for you to let this source energy flow in a creative way. Okay. Um, and then in, I'll go again into the, the breakdown of the universal and the earth energies, but you have the number two energy is duality. So you come from initiation, new beginnings, the individuality into duality. And when you start recognizing how to use duality, then you can start to be creative. Okay. So you can see how those flows, again, don't think of it linearly. We, we want to do that as humans. But you, you keep going back to the beginning of the new and look at the duality and how do we be creative with that? It's not, you know, one and then that energy stops, two and then that energy stops. You really have to continue to build and integrate it again. It's a spiral, okay? Um, and then, let's see. Um, and then you're sharing with others in, in a connected kind of way in this energy. And if you're in high vibration, each of the earth energies has a low vibration, 3D humans, man, we do it, and a high vibration. So if you're in the high vibration of this energy, you'll see beyond your own personal agenda and look to see what you see in others that you can see in yourself, okay? Um, and then the low vibrational energy of the seeing tends to lead to rash decisions, narrow-minded views without regard for the bigger picture. Okay, so what I think I'll do here is I'm going to go through the different energies, just be mindful of our time, and I'm going to give you kind of just a quick overview of each of the energies. Um, oh, I just saw Rose's message. Um, oh, yeah, she had to go. Okay, perfect. But yeah, and then I want to look at, the, I want to look at some transits with this, with the energy numbers, and then I want to call, call, call it. Want you okay, to I'm going to do a real quick rundown of the yeah. 13th universal and a quick rundown yeah. of earth energies yeah um, and then i'm going to show you how it works for like isaac and my charts individually mm -hmm. and then how you can use this in relationships and all of that so the universal energy of one is initiation new beginnings okay um and people that have this in their charts tend to like to start new things and they really excel at it they always want that momentum of moving forward they love the newness of the beginning um number two is again the duality um we learn the fact that you have opposites Okay, we have day, night, dark, light, blue, uh, you know, um, black, white. People with this energy have uh, the tremendous ability um, to understand, I'm sorry, people with this energy have tremendous conflicts, but they also ask us to honor these differences and finding harmony of them. It's the practice of alchemy, okay? The life mission is to uh, practice this as an example to others. Uh, number three is creative energy. Uh, again, you pull it in from source, God, spirit, and this is what creates flow and movement. You set intentions with that new energy in one. You start to recognize the duality and opposites of polarity. Um, and then this is time to start, start being creative. Uh, people with this energy tend to be restless. They struggle with stillness because their creative energy is so strong. They're very expressive and they need peaceful ways to reconcile this inner and outer energy. Uh, four is foundation. And if you're, you're going to start recognizing some numerological uh, connections, too, if you're into numerology. The number four in numerology is foundation, structure. Um, this is where you define your reality, set your boundaries for your creation. Um, there's a lot of stability in the number four energy, but there can be rigidity, so you've got to watch that. Uh, it's not good days for physical and mental movement. Again, it's the time to set the stability. Uh, people with this energy um, share their practical knowledge of the application of setting foundations, but they also can tend to be rigid. Um, and it does give you the time to look at the structure of what you're trying to build. 
Five is change, uh, time to adjust, adapt, be flexible. You, know, you start getting some new information and you, to create, keep that creative growth, you've got to adapt and make changes you know, where you need to. Um, evaluate your progress in this process of what intentions you set at the beginning. And this is where you also recognize the power of choice and free will as humans. Um, and then recognizing also that when you have flexibility and adaptability, you're more in alignment with the cosmos. Uh, people who have this energy struggle between erratic, uh, being erratic and flexible. Um, they have to practice patience and resist the impulse for change just for the sake of change. Evaluate first, then consider how to make that change. Uh, number six is flow, the energy of refinement. You transcend this conflict and ease into harmony, finding a way around the rock rather than keep trying to push the rock. Um, think of rivers, you know. Um, we do this with ease. You look at the challenges, but how do you harness this in a flowing way? Uh, people who have this energy tend to look for ways to improve things, but they may be over, overly critical. And they have to learn how to be non-judgmental to go with the flow. Uh, number seven is you start to merge the world. So seven is this direct center of the number, the 13. So you're in the center between the two worlds. It's the halfway point. Um, it's the door between the spiritual and physical. Visions are opened. You start moving from 3D thinking and start going into the, the ethers in the spiritual thinking. Um, you start to merge with source. People who have this energy act as reflections to show us how we look at the world, but we can also be blinded by this if you can't see your own image in this. Uh, there's an element of cooperation and truth. Number eight, connection to abundance. Again, numerologically speaking, eight is an abundance number, infinity. Um, you finally make the connection to others and realize um, that you can start manifesting the, of your intentions. Um, I have a dog, so I gotta occupy him. Um, and there's the energy of love. Um, you understand the unconditionality of love makes that connection. Again, infinity. Um, no need to compete to, to become abundant. And what do we do in this 3D world? You know, we do that. People who have this energy are gatherers of information and they desire to connect the dots with all this information. And they love travel and sometimes can have an unbalanced grasp of reality. So again, these are the universal energies, your cosmic energy. Number nine is harmony. All that's been accumulated at this point starts to merge. You start blending differences. There's really a lot of peace and cooperation with these energetic uh, influences. And the people um, in this energy also enjoy engage, uh, engaging details to connect the individual to the whole. You work toward peace by taking the little bits and pieces and trying to, to blend them. They can struggle with disappointment when peace and harmony are not the result. Number 10, physical manifestation. It's an indication of your progress toward the energy of intentions that you set on that first day, that initiation. Um, and if you follow the flow of the two and the three and the four all the way up to the 10, you start to see the, the manifestation of it. If you go with the flow of those energies, don't push against them. Um, you know, get away from that 3D interference of separation, competition, and greed. And then people with this energy understand the true power of manifestation. They see the opportunity when challenges arise. Um, they also understand the mind-physical connection and their purpose is to help us all understand that. And then illumination is number 11. Uh, we start having a new awareness of this reality when we open our eyes and open our hearts and connect to the cosmos. It's a very Neptunian energy um, because you become aware of the higher truth. You're illuminated to the higher truth. It's very freeing. Um, the people who have this energy desire to explore, connect with the energies, uh, to also enlighten, illuminate with humanity. Uh, they trust the universe, they trust the flow, they trust the higher truth, and they bring light into this 3D world. And then number 12 is the understanding. We start to understand that beginnings and ends are, are not different, they're one and the same. You know, death and life, death and life, death and life, death and birth, they, they, they're all interconnected. There is no start and there is no end. Uh, it's a renew, rejuvenation and renewal time. And then people uh, with this intuitively understand that death is a transcendence, it's a rebirth, it's an unending cycle, and they see things from the higher perspectives. And then last is 13, the completion, the final integration of all that has come before. And I use that word before as a human construct, remember, not linear. Um, so, you know, you start to ascend and you make that connection to source. It's the final realization and completion of all of these energies if you've worked with them. 
And again, no ending, no beginning. As soon as 13 ends, one starts. So it's just, a, again, to um, work with that energy. And then the people with this have their illusion busters. They're very clairvoyant. They're prophetic dreamers. Uh, they understand the importance of embracing change to become ascended beings. Okay. And I ran through that super, super duper quickly. But I, again, I can share uh, the notes. And if you get the book, I mean, there's a lot more to it. I really just try to pull out the salient points. Because again, I've read the book through once and I'm going through again and I'm getting more out of it. So let me ask you real quick. So thir yes. there's 13 day cycles and, and, and that's what you're talking about. So whatever, yes. so the ephemeris says what those days are. Right. So, right. So, oh, okay. So, so today is a three and it's creating energy. So remember you had initiation two days ago. If you kind of set an intention, what do I want to do for these next 13 days? Sort of like a new moon. You know, what do I want to do for these next 13 days? What is, what is it I want to do with myself? in these next 13 days that I can start. But the earth energy is exploring. So you wanna look at that energy. It's sort of like if the new moon is in Taurus, how do you use the Taurian energy to set your intentions for the next 13 days, right. okay? Mm -hmm. So then the earth energies, again, we talked about the levels of consciousness, individual, community, global, and universal. Um, we talked about the cardinal direction, east, north, west, and south, and they all have colors. So it's, um, red, white, um, blue, and yellow. And then uh, we have the planetary influences. So uh, again, super quickly, the first energy is being. That's the, again, the earth energy. Now you're the human, okay? And that um, is a highly creative time. Again, it's the start of the new stuff. Um, and we also tend to struggle for our sense of security and we can be imbalanced in this energy. Um, so here's the connection to the planets. It's Neptunian because there's um, visionary aspects to it. There's also confusion and wild thoughts or feelings are associated with it. You know, think about when you're ready to start something new, a new job, a new home, a new, you kind of have that anxiety of the newness, but you're also excited about it. You have a vision for this new thing, but it, it can create a sense of unease because it's new, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, people with these energies are uh, strong creative uh, types. They have intense emotions that support hard work. So here again, I talked about higher vibration, lower vibration. If you manifest this energy in a lower vibrational way, you start feeling rejected, lonely, and critical of others. But if you manifest it in a higher vibrational way, you have a use of creativity to start over when necessary. So look at that. If it's in your birth chart, how you can see that lower higher but also look at it as the daily energy if i work with this energy in a lower vibrational way today then i would tend to be rejected lonely and critical of others okay it's sort of like squares in in uh astrology it creates this this tense energy it creates ways that you might not use the energy in a positive way so you have to look to the higher vibrational way to use this energy so um, can we do something real quick Yes, absolutely. It's getting, it's like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I know, we're getting. You, you want to do, a, let's just, I want to see how it works too, because I'm sure everybody else is curious, just like me. Because <laughs> I don't yeah, know how it works either. So, so I'll tell, I'll do, I'll talk about our natal charts. Yeah, well, what about, so, I want to do a transit, because I saw a Neptunian transit, and I'm really. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So I have it up. Do you have yours up, or should I just share my screen, and then you. Go ahead and share your screen because I have my book I can look at yeah, here too. As you're talking, I'm like, I'm like, that's what I want to know. <laughs> so I'm sure everybody else wants to know what's up too. So this, this is what I was looking at, is uh, Sun trying Mercury, uh, Sun trying Neptune. Let, let me, let me uh, mark it with a pen, because this is. Uh, Pull your mic closer. Oh, okay, yeah. So let's. Um, it's this right here, Sun trying Mercury, and it's these dates. So how would we apply that? Now, if we're all working with the system. So you have, let's just show, sun on this date is in Gemini, right? Neptune is right on the cusp between Pisces and Aquarius. And the days are 11, goes exact on the 12th, and it ends on the 13th. So how would we how would we say because this is like channeling messages right information, the Neptunian realm. 
It could be like these unknown messages are coming through. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how can we apply that? Like, how would we then layer it with, with the Pleiadian energy? So like the numbers we're looking at, let's see, can multiple participants? Yes. So let me share mine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this will work. We'll, we'll, we'll take a shot in the dark here. So can you guys see Ike's share screen as well, or just mine? I just see mine. Okay. Um, so take your, take your share off. So we know that it's, keep in mind, um, actually, Ike, if you'll type in the chat, the sun trying Neptune. 11 right, yeah. to 12, 13, so that people have that as a point of reference. Yeah, okay, hang on a second. Sun, Sun, Gemini, Trine, uh, Neptune, Cusp of and then um, it's 11, 12, 13, right? Well, just 11 yeah. to yeah. Team. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now take your share screen off. Okay. And I'll pull mine up. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. So if we pull the ephemeris back up, mm -hmm. and somebody asked if there was a PDF of this. Um, I, when I will put in the links to the the book and the website. So the interesting thing about the book is the ephemeris in the book starts in 1975, but of course, obviously. Some of us were born before 1975. So the ephemeris is actually in a PDF format that you can get through her website as well. Um, I just happen to put it all in PDF because it's easier for me to have it all, you know, in one place. Or you so, can get it from the website of the writer, of the author? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll get those, those um, okay. links out to everybody. But mm -hmm. so we were looking at July 11th, 12th, and 13th. So the, the start the universal energy on the 11th is a seven so that is the merging of the worlds okay oh, wow. this is again the half the pinnacle point the of merging the of worlds right the merging wow. of the worlds mm -hmm. then we go into the actual day that the aspect was direct is the eight the connection and, and abundance and then the nine was the harmony okay so just hold those thoughts so then we go to the earth energies which are catalyzing, uh, which is 19. So catalyzing energy is a universal energy. It's uh, challenging, dramatic, the last push to enlightenment. Because remember, there's 20 cycles. So we're just at the, we're just about ready to be enlightened human beings. Um, and it's the storm before the calm. So rapid transformation, destruction of the old. And uh, we make that difference from a place of higher vibration. That's the universal effect, the universal uh, level of consciousness. And believe it or not, the interesting planet or, or celestial body that's associated with this is Eris. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with Eris, but it's uh, the planet that pushes, it's a dwarf planet that pushes for pro profound transformation. It addresses blind spots, <laughs> okay? So that's, that's the catalyzing. And then enlightening again is the 20th, the pinnacle energy is the chance to achieve all true progress for everyone, but only if we let go of polarizing behaviors. So Neptune, we get to understand the connection, the understanding of the messages from the underworld or the upper world or the spiritual world or whatever, however you qualify that you start receiving those messages. Mm -hmm. And it's associated with Pluto, the true transformation and empowerment, which brings ultimate growth. And then the, the, then we go back to the beginning in the earth energy of being, we start over again, but again, it's the ninth energy of harmonizing the universal. So you really have to look at, you know, how do we take the harmonizing universal energy and go back to the beginning with human energy. And then we can use the Neptunian sun interaction. You can kind of pull this in. Okay. What does this mean today? Mm -hmm. You can see where you can really get down a rabbit hole with this. Wow. So what I do is I have um, the astrology planner that one of our astro other astrologers put out. So I look at the daily transits for that day. And then I actually jot down in my notes the, the universal and the earth energy for the day. And I look at it in conjunction with the daily forecast. Right. right. It's just another layer. Of, um... It is. It's a huge layer. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to stop share because in the interest of time, I want to just give a really quick idea of how a birth chart works. Yeah, let's look at and that. Yeah. To get, get, there's nothing, I'm not going to actually show anything. I'm just going to tell you because I, I jotted it down. So I'm born July 16, 1963. 
you don't need anything but the birth date. You don't need time. You don't need location. You know, it's literally quite literally attached to just December. So it doesn't matter where you were born because the Pleiadian earth energies don't have anything to do. It's a spiral energy. Okay. So what that means is I'm a five universal energy and a four um, earth energy. So a five is, is um, let's see, hope, so, sorry, I've got all these notes run together. So Yes, I'm a five. So I have the moving energy of high vibration in exploring differences between us in positive ways. It's a moving energy. So that's my cosmic imprint. That's, that's how I'm supposed to really touch base with how to connect to the cosmos. Okay? Wait, how did you get the number real quick? How did you get five? So you use the ephemeris. Oh, so I go to my birth date in the oh. ephemeris and it's a five and then a, a four. So it's a five universal energy and a four earth energy. Is okay, so it's not like numerology where you add all the... the no, 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 no. Okay, no. okay. so you look Literally, on that exactly day. Like, yep. Yeah. So like somebody born on today would yeah. have what I talked about for today's ephemeris. That would be their birth chart blueprint. Got it. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then in low vibration, you know, if I, if I get into the low vibrational aspects of the moving energy, I can be adversarial, contentious, greedy, you know, or people with those energies can be that way. Um, so then, and again, your level of consciousness shows this is a, an individual energy. So um, I tend to look at the, how I as an individual can bring this forward to others. Uh, and in the earth energy, I'm a four, I'm a planter. So I, what I plant from my individual perspective is for the greater good of the community, global and universe, universal community. Um, I just do the planting work at the individual level because it's an individual energy, okay? Um, whereas Ike is an 18, which is self-regulating, and he's doing his work in conjunction and from the universal level because the 18 is a universal level. Mm. And, um, and in either case, you know, there's no good or bad. We need all of it to work together. Then the other thing is, is you do have the, you, know, you remember that ener um, evolutionary guidance, the start of that 13 day cycle. So what you do is you take your birth date um, here. I'll do something real quick here. I'm going to do another share screen. Um, see if I can get to it somewhat quickly. Okay, so let me share this screen real quick. Okay, so this is in my birth date range. So again, this is my birthday right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm a five universal energy and planting is a four in the earth energies. But if I want to look at what my evolutionary guidance is, I go back to the, the bold is the start of the 13 day cycle. Wow. So my evolutionary blueprint for my life, it's sort of like your North node. It's also, um, I kind of look at it as my ascending sign as well. So what I'm here to do in the big picture is I'm here to, uh, we're all here to, to start at the beginning, to initiate new beginnings. Because remember the start of the cycle for the uh, evolutionary guidance is always initiation from the universal energies. But the other part of it is my human job is to be an enlightener, which is really, really fascinating to me. So that means I'm here as a person uh, with enlightenment is, I'm a being of light and love. I'm idealistic, a romantic at heart, inspirational, high focus on the beauty in life. And I'm always inspired to share. Well, look what I'm doing right now. <laughs> it's a good example. Um, if I'm in the lower vibration energy of that, I can be disappointed when my ideals aren't met and can be perfectionist. Well, yeah, that fits. And in the higher vibrations, it's visionary, and I'm determined to bring unity and peace, merge the polarities in one, into oneness. That's my life path job. That's what I'm here to do. I'm, we're all here to start new beginnings, but I'm here to enlighten the humanity so that we can become one. And how I do that is through change and planting the seeds as an individual. Oh, wow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, Ike, you're what, 1974? I'm sorry? 73. 73. I'm not 25 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 
December what? Fourth. December. Okay. Yeah. So, so December fourth. So again, we all start with one, mm -hmm. and then his blueprint in what he's here to do. He's um, an intuitor. So as somebody who's got intuiting energy, again, as his path mm -hmm. is, um, he's serious, he, he's deep, and he questions all. Always seeking that universal wisdom. Nah, that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, this is you. Always learning. <laughs> Able to work with what you have. And in the lower vibrations, you may feel rejected when being outspoken. Could be judgmental and dismissive of others. In higher vibration, you're open to the intuition, curious, tireless search for truth. Very energetic in that regard. So again, that's the North Node-ish ascending life path. This is his overarching job. And then for his specific birth date, he's a three universal energy. So he's creative, uh, but he can be restless, struggles with stillness when the creative juices are strong, expressive, artistic, and needs peaceful ways to reconcile that inner and outer energy. And then the self-regulating piece is an 18. And so how he, again, brings that intuiting quest for everything to everybody is through um, having a sharp mind, can cut through to the heart of the matter, understands nuances and details, can be polite. Lower vibration has a difficulty seeing your own strength, confusion, lack of self-confidence, and tend to hide from yourself. But in the high vibration, non-judgmental about yourself, you look for clarity and insights as a way to help others. Wow, so that's deep, yeah. That's you. Polite, so, yeah. so again, you can look at that. This is my life path. I'm here to do this by using these. Again, that's like your moon sign, your sun sign. How do you use those energies and those signs to manifest what your life path is and how to bring it. And we do this in a universal consciousness. Our job is to help humanity ascend and help ourselves ascend. And how do we do that is with our blueprint. Wow, that's crazy. And then you yeah. can break apart every planet too, right? Like you want, to you want to dissect the planet in your chart? Like I'm having right. issues with Saturn. Like what's the deal with Saturn? Then you can, you can zone in on that. Well, you would have to use the sidereal astrology for that. But for you, like your birthday is, again, a self-regulating earth energy. So you have Neptunian influence um, in terms of being in surrender and sharing the cosmic wisdom. Well, my son is conjunct Neptune. Well, okay, there you go. And then the self-regulating is my Saturn's in the first house, first house in Gemini. So and, if you, and if you look at my chart, I'm a, a Gemini cusp cancer. So that desire to share that knowledge is, is very strong in me. And, and it, that came out in the Pleiadian chart too. Mm. You know, I want to learn, but I want to communicate it. I want to share with people. I want to interact mm -hmm. with this information mm -hmm. in a way that I can bring it to others. That's the planting. That's also the um, movement too. By sharing this energy, I help us move into that cosmic energy. Wow. So. You want to just do a few more? Like I, we got a few chats in there you want to yep. do put on the line just yep. to, you know, who, who's next tasia tasia got it so i'm just going to quickly read it and i'll give you the real salient point so you just kind of get a brief idea of what it is um okay so tasia you're 1989 so it takes me a second to get to that date I, I wish there was a quick way to do this but the, it's a pdf so it takes a little bit of time um okay wait a minute the chat bumped March 17th, 1989. So March 17th. So your um, evolutionary guidance energy, of course, again, it's always a one for the universal. So remember that. And then your uh, earth energy is exploring. So that's your overarching path. And exploring means, so that is, sorry, I always have to look up the numbers. It takes me a second. It's a 13. So that means um, you're here to be, you're, again, your life path is to be a bridger of light, explorer of all possibilities. You connect the present to the future through vision, highly trained in your whatever interests you, and you have strong opinions and the desire to share them. You love the openness of the outdoors, and in lower vibration, you can get attached to your opinions, be critical and judgmental, but in higher, you can be aware of opposites and look for ways to harmonize them. Okay, so that's your overarching birth energy. Okay, your, your north node path, if you will. And then your actual birth date 
is the 17th. So you're an eight universal energy. So that means you're to connect to the abundance. You're a gatherer of information and the desire to connect dots. You love to travel. Again, there's that again. And if you're unbalanced, you tend to have an unbalanced grasp of reality. Okay, in a cosmic universal sense. But in the earth, you're enlightening. So that you're 20, you're just like me. You're here to be the light worker, to bridge people into the cosmos at that higher level of human learning. So again, you're, you're an explorer, but you're also here to, um, to make that connection and abundance in an enlightening way. That's, that's a real tiny way to, to squish that into a little box quickly. Sure. Appreciate that. So I, I just want to understand more about how you got those numbers. Okay. So how I got the numbers, I'll share the screen real quick. Okay. Can you see my screen? It's coming up. Hang on. Okay. Almost. So here's your birthday, March 17, 1989. So okay. Told- so it's not an eight because I'm born on the 17th and one plus seven is eight. No, it's just because it started with exploring, which is one. Well, it has nothing to do with numerology. Remember, the numbers are just merely a way to define the energy. I mean, it does sort of have, you know, but I mean, it's, it's don't get attached to the number. I was just connecting that and it's not connected. Got it. (laughs) So what you do is you take your birthday, you go back to the bowl. That's the start of the 13 day cycle. That's that evolutionary guidance blueprint. That's your North node blueprint for your life. So that's mm-hmm. the overarching governing energy, okay? Mm-hmm. Sort of like your ascending sign. So the one is, the, is always the initiation beginning of the universal energy, and exploring is earth energy number 13. What's gotcha. confusing gotcha. about gotcha. this is you have gotcha. the number for the universal, but the word for the earth. Can okay. you say that last part again? So what's confusing about the ephemeris is the number represents the universal energy but it doesn't give you the word for it. And the word is the earth energy, but it doesn't give you the number for it. So it gets a little, (laughs) I know. So what I had to do is, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but I wrote in my book, see, I wrote all the numbers so that I could quickly go from, and here's like the ephemeris. Mm -hmm. I can quickly go, what is exploring? I don't know what number that is, so I can look it up. Uh Okay, so then we go down to 20. Hmm? Oh, go on. So we go down to your birth date, your universal energy is an eight. So eight is the connection to abundance. And then your mm-hmm. earth energy is enlightening, which is a 20. So you see how I got that now? How, how did you get 20? Because I know that enlightening is the number 20 in the earth. Oh, energy. That's got, you, got you, got you. Yep, I'm with yep. you now. Yep. See, that's okay. why it's confusing. Okay. Cool. Appreciate so, that. Kathleen, March 1973. So, let me go up. Oops. This is the fastest way to do it. I wish I could do a quick search. One of these days, I might, you know, have all the time in the world to do it that way. Oh, you got to go through. It's like a hard PDF. Yeah, because it's a hard PDF. So, there's no real quick way. Okay, March 1973, any particular date? Kathleen, go ahead and take yourself off mute. She's yelling when you're mute. <laughs> I'm mute. There we go. Go ahead. Oh, can't hear you, darling. Uh-uh, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Put it in the chat. Put it in the, yeah. yeah I just, I need the specific date. That's what happens when you buy headphones on the side of the road. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> It's okay. Don't yeah. worry. I'm I'm happy to be on for another half hour if people are. If Ike isn't, that's fine too. I don't. Whatever you guys oh, want. Oh, eighth. Oh, hey. She said eighth. March eighth. Okay. Sure. So here we are. We we look for your birthday first. March eighth, nineteen seventy three. Is that correct? Give me a yes. Okay. So then we go up to the the bold. So that's your evolutionary guidance. That's your north node ascending side imprint. Okay. And I'm using that just for an analogy. So we, again, we're always a one universal energy at the start. And then you're listening, which is a three in earth energy. So your, your overarching life path as, as a human is you need to be, you're extremely private, desire for solitude, patient, you have ability to solve problems. You can work for long periods without boredom. 
you get into the lower vibrations, you can be overcautious, pessimistic, and controlling, and have a simmering temper and a need to be right. In the higher vibration, you can be practical, responsible, and dependable. Okay, so again, that's your overarching, you know, path energy. And then your actual birth date was the eighth. So then you're a five in the universal energy. You're like me, change. You're here to make change. And then in, in the cosmic sense, and then you're also uh, in the earth energy, you're here to uh, do the re work of remembering, which is the seven. So your job is to be deeply committed to helping humanity remember who we are peaceful, generous, living in two worlds. Uh, in your lower vibration, you can be overly compromising just for the sake of peace. You struggle between freedom and security. Higher vibration, you're, you share, you're fair, you're cooperative, very balanced and connected to your community. It's a, it's a community energy, okay? So again, how do I take this life path of listening and use the energy of change and remembering to manifest that life path? For the greater good of all. Okay, so that's how you work with it. Uh, let's see, who else? Let's see, Tasia we did, Kathleen we did, Gretchen, August 1st, 1976. So are you guys getting an idea to see how this works as far as how I get the numbers and how I figure out where your birth date lines birth up? Lines up? Yes. Okay. It's inter yes. Okay, so August 1st, uh, 1976. Okay, so you're right here. Okay, can you see that? Okay. Well, I guess, am I seeing the right? Left -hand corner. Lower left. Nope. Nope. There it is. Okay. Yep, I see it. Okay. See it. So here we are, August 1st. So again, we go back up to the bowl to see what your evolutionary guidance, your big life path energy is. And what you're here to do in terms of the universal energies is involved with, um, self-regulate, I mean, um, uh, earth energy, sorry, self-regulation is a number 18. So that means your overarching energy, again, initiation, new birth, the one, the earth energy of 18, self-regulating, and I have that on my chart, you guys can't see that, but that you're here to, um, you have a sharp mind, you can cut through to the heart of the matter, you understand nuances and details, can be very polite. This is, this is Ike. Difficulty seeing your own strengths, confused, lack of self-confidence, you tend to hide from yourself again in lower vibration. In a higher vibration, you're non-judgmental about yourself, you look for clarity and insights as a way to help others. Um, a way to get beyond the illusion, move forward and achieve what's best for all. That's again your overarching path for life but your specific birth date, how you do that is a 12 in universal energy, which is understanding. Uh, you intuitively understand that death and transcendence are a rebirth and an unending cycle. You see things from all perspectives and you understand the concept of rejuvenation and the restoration of old things and you can tend to be a healer in the cosmic sense. And how you do that in your earthly presence is through feeling. And that's a nine. And what that is for you is um, you, you can be very emotional. You, you respond to life based on the moon. The moon influences this based on feelings. Um, you're very sensitive and curious. And if in your lower vibration, you're very emotionally overreactive, you react from instinct versus intuition and can be uncompromising. But if you're in mm -hmm. higher vibration, you can be sensitive to the energies. You can have very strong psychic, psychic ability and a dreamer. Um, and you can be fluid and flexible and go with the flow. Thank you, Julie. That sounded wonderful. Yeah. Wow. This is wonderful. Thank you. You're going to share this PDF or the link to the site? Well, so that begs the question. Um, you know, I have, I personally have no problem with it. I just don't know if there's a copyright issue with that. Oh. I don't think through the PDF that there would be because she has the link on her website. Yeah. Um, but I think there is, uh, and if I synthesize the overarching energies, I think that's okay. But to actually copy pages out of the book, I wouldn't feel super good about that. I think if you're that interested in it, it is totally and completely worth getting the book. Yeah. Because totally, you go back to it over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, it's so different, you know. What's the name of this book again? Um, so here, let me take it off screen. And I'm going to actually, I'll, I'll type in the chat too. So remember, before we break out of the chat, um, yeah, Kat's got it there, but I'll type it into the chat as well so that if you guys save the chat, you'll have the information. 
Yeah, yeah, I bought it on Kindle. I was reading it. Oh, so it's Pleiadian Earth Energy Astrology. Right. Beautiful. And I'll put it in the chat if people want, you know, don't want to jot it down now and want to get it later. Yeah. And then the ephemera, yeah, I think that I saw it here. It's on the back, right? Yeah, in the back, it starts at 1975, but she says actually in that, if you go to her website, you can get the previous one. But if you know what, if you guys don't want to worry about that, I can send you the PDF. I can, I can link it in our uh, Sidereal Evolution page too. Yeah. Um, so it's by Pia Orlean. And if you, if you Google her name, you'll get her website too. Okay. Um, Okay, so there's the, the information on that. The other one I want to give you guys is I'm going to put this link. Um, there's another person that does the, the Venus star uh, astrology, and I'm, I'm starting to delve down that rabbit hole. I've got the book on order because huh? it all plays into this. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so if you go to her website, and her name is um, Ariel Gutman, she talks about the Venus star point astrology, but no... I'm going to, here's the disclaimer. She uses tropical astrology. So ah. just be aware of that. But Ike and I were talking about that earlier because if you, if in that particular aspect, if you know where your Venus star is, there's also more you can layer into your story. But I want to look at it. Once I get her book, I'm going to look and see where she says my Venus star is. And I'm going to look to see how it compares to my sidereal placement yeah. Venus. And if that's all we need, then that's super easy. And then you just look at the influences for the placement, the true placement of it. So like I'm a, I'm a Gemini cause cancer in sidereal, but cancer in tropical, you know, so it's like if my Venus star is supposedly in uh, Aries in tropical, but it's actually in Taurus in sidereal, I would look at the Taurus influence because I, I identify more closely with that, for example. Um, so does everybody understand how, how the birth charts work? And I see there's a, a ton of them. What I'm happy to do, um, oh, uh, Kat, if you go and just Google uh, Pia Orlean, you'll get her website, Google her name. And if not, then just, just put a note in the chat and, or in the um, Sidereal Evolu uh, Revolution page and we can do that. What I'll do with the rest of the birth dates, I'm gonna save the chats and I can post that in, is everybody on Sidereal Revolution in this group? Yeah, you should get, let me get that linked up. Okay. We got some scragglers on that part of the group. That's not good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let me get that up. It's good to have new energy, right? Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me get that. Well, up. and what I can do too here is I'm gonna put um, I'm gonna put my. I have a bunch of different emails. I'm gonna put this one. So if you guys email me too, if you if you're not on the sidereal, I, I I would love if people are comfortable with it. I don't have to put your actual birth date on the sidereal revolution page, but I can say you know Melody, here's what yours is based on your birth date, and I can just put that piece of the information in it, but not put your birth date, and then that way you guys can see how all the energies work too. I think it's a great way to educate everybody on how how the different you know like what does a Taurian sun sign look like? Well, now we all know that even if I'm not a Taurian sun sign, it just helps you to understand the energy. So I'm, I'm happy to do that as well. I just put the link in there. Yeah, just join the group. I think I yeah, join the group. It's it's really it's a great really if if again if you're on Facebook, um, it's it's a closed group and it's it's just it's a great place to post mm -hmm. this kind of info. Um, and if there's and, and so I can even I, I didn't even come close to touching on synastries. So you can do relationship oh, oh. synastries. Oh. So if a one uh, a one universal for earth is together with a five universal 18 earth how does that look in terms of a relationship chart so we can get into all that bunny hole stuff too wow. and then there's what are called vortex cycles those are days of intensities when the universal and the earth energies intersect um, it affects the collective and the individual so if you think of like um like right now all these retrogrades as dispositors to me that's like an intense energy it's like double the energy and then shadow cycles are times of energetic imbalances and aligned in a collective and individual way. They're like karmic energies. And it feels like a, a lot like a retrograde period. And it's time to go within. And there's ways you can figure out what your shadow, personal shadow cycles are. So, and I, and I can, I need to talk about that because I'm have, I'm struggling trying to figure that out because one place the author says how to figure it out one way. And then in another place, she says a different way. So I want to see if maybe I'm reading that wrong, but 
that would be a, a, another bunny hole to go down. That'll so. do it. I go into hiding. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like right now, you know, look at the stellium of planets in Sagittarius right now, you know, so yeah. that, how are those retrogrades affecting you is sort of like the shadow cycles idea, I think. That's how I'm intuiting those. So how do you harness those retrograde periods in your personal chart? Did so. anybody see the moon up like two nights ago, the moon and then Saturn and Jupiter were conjunct with the moon under it, it looked like a face? Yeah, we we're watching it from the water. We we're on the boat watching it and just like, that was fantastic. But that's Amazing. the energy that we're dealing with. It, it's like yeah. setting, uh, illuminating, retrograde. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. But I, I just, I really encourage people to, to think about this in, in, you know, how we, with our global crap going on, for lack of a better term, how can we start working with these energies to bring this unity together? And I think if we all start looking at doing this in a way that works with the energies rather than against the energies, you know, then you, I think we can really make a big difference. Um, mm -hmm. This is the number 20 enlightener talking here. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm here to do. So, yeah. um, and make change at a universal level by planting these seeds. So, yeah. so you can see how that's working with me personally. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, put, um, put your email in here. So people, I did. Yeah, put it again. It's in the chat. Yeah, so remember, save your chat. You can just hit those three buttons and hit save chat. And then if you hit show in folder, it'll show you a folder on your personal computer where it was saved. So that'll have all the links. It'll have my email. Um, oh, some other people popped in some more emails, so I'm going to go. So every time you save it, it'll update it in the folder. So. Um, and seriously, if I, it's going to take me a few days because I, again, I work a, a nine to five outside of this. This is not my full time. I wish it were. Um, but I would, uh, I'll try to get to some of this stuff over the next several days and post it in. And I may even just do like one person at a time. So um, be super patient. And um, I think it's fun. I, I just, I really yeah. love this other element that we're bringing into telling our stories because that's really what they are. They're our personal stories. And how can we use that information to be, you know, greater human beings on this earth. Mm -hmm. So, so I hope that was helpful. Any last minute questions or comments or thoughts or, and I, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just chime in. I have a ton of questions, but far <laughs> too many to <laughs> ask here. Um, I just want to thank you for your clear and enthusiastic and deeply informative teaching. I am. Um, thank you. Yeah, these are really, it's, I think it's really hard to understand these things that overlay, and I think you just did a really um, great job explaining. So thank you so oh, much. I feel really blessed to have been here. I appreciate that. That's, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And again, I'm, I'm happy to post some of this stuff on our, our Sidereal Revolution page and, you know, can follow up. Maybe we'll do a part two. Yeah. Yeah, I got yeah. excited about this. This is exciting. I'm definitely curious. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It's really, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, Tasia, did you have a question? Yeah. And um, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I'm just trying to get the language of like the universal energy is the earth energy and the earth energy is the universal. Like, did I say that right? I, I'm yeah. just matching up. Like I wrote out the 20, I don't know if they're earth energies. Yes, 20 earth. Okay, so I wrote them out like one through twenty, uh -huh. and then, and then like the evolutionary guidance is like always one from whenever Universal. that that thirteen starts. Right. So the so, evolutionary is always number one universal. Evolutionary is always number one universal. Always, always, because again, it's the start of the thirteen. Uh, cycles of the universal cycle. So, okay, so if I am exploring for my number one universal. No, okay, so number one is beginning and initiating. Exploring is the earth energy of number, that's the confusing okay, I didn't part mean that. So, so basically like the, the evolutionary guidance is. You're a, you're a one New beginnings, universal, and a 13 exploring Earth. 
because the ephemeris doesn't give the number and the name for both. It gives the number only for universal and the name for Earth. It's super confusing. Okay, so I have a one universal, 13 Earth. Right. So and then what's up with eight? I thought. So that's your evolutionary guidance. That's like your North Node ascending path. And then the other numbers were relative to your actual birth date. So do you remember what those were? I'm so confused. I know. I have so many different numbers <laughs> written down. What, what was your birthday um, again? I have 1, 13, 8, and 20 down. Okay. My birthday is okay. March 17th, 1989. I, I can answer just based on what you told me. So 1, 13, so one universal beginning, 13 mm -hmm. exploring. That's your evolutionary guidance. That's your life path energy. Okay. Okay. So, th so, so one, universal one universal, 13 earth. Exploring. Uh-huh. Got okay? that. So that's your life path. So then what were the other two numbers? Um, eight and 20. Okay. So you're an eight. So how you, how you do this, how you manifest this life path is as a connection to abundance, universal, eight, connection to abundance, universal. Okay, that's for your birth date within that. Mm -hmm. cycle. And then the other mm -hmm. one was, what was the other number? I'm sorry. Um, 20. 20. So your earth energy is a 20 in lightning. So it's okay. earth energy, 20 in lightning. So you're here to do that, the one and the other number. Again, I forget because we've said so many numbers now. The one. One and 13 and eight. One and 13, and that you're here to do that work as the eight and the 20. Okay. You're to and use the eight and 20 energy to do the work of one and 13. Okay. 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 Does that makes sense. So now, now? And it's not, it's not just a coincidence that, that there's 12 in between one and 13 and eight no, and 20. No. It's always going to work that way. Yeah. Well, because what happens is, is remember the evolutionary guidance cycle is 13 days based on the evolutionary guidance. And then the earth energies, because there's 20 days, you know, when you get to say they both start at one, then when you hit 13 universal, you're hitting 13 earth. When you start back one at universal, you're now at 14 Earth because mm -hmm. the numbers aren't the same. So mm -hmm. it's going it, to the one's going to move in one way and the other's going to always be every 13. That's why the numbers don't always sync. Okay. But okay. for but me, every 260 I'm lucky days, that, you can that. But every 260 days, they will sync because you'll have reached the end of the, the, each of the two cycles. What is, what makes 260? The two cycles? Times 20. Okay. Okay, and that's the Venus uh, orbital path. Right. Yeah. See, I want to. I just want to mention that I, I posted a link in the uh, in the chat that is um, also from Sophia Venus. It's the like basically like her ephemeris, which is mm. on the Venus star point. And um, just like quick tidbit, I figured out that I have car karma related to Venus from the beginning of when I first got my license. But there's like always been a connection and it's interesting because Venus is possessions. Yeah. <laughs> so it really like helps take the personal like yucky out of it. And um, yeah, you do have to adjust for, you know, the rebel astrologers that we are. But, um, you know, it's just a little bit of math. I'm here to make change by planting individual seeds to get people to be enlightened. That's my job. Yeah. What's the song? Bless you mean? mentioned something about the Mayan Zulkin 1320 and then we just said 13 times 20 is a 260. You want to unmute yourself let me? Yeah yeah speak up I'd love to hear that. I'm so excited. I, love. Oh, <laughs> I make I make books every year for 15 years based on 1320 in the Mayan calendar which is the which is the Venus cycle this is the Zulkin it's a 1320 yeah. map and um, my work is all working with this. So for me to hear this as uh, connected with the Pleiadian Venus cycle, which is, you know, all in this, and this is the whole matrix mm -hmm. of, you know, I think what you're talking about, I'm so sorry I came in late. I only just got, saw the email and just happened to uh, come on. And, and Catch the replay. 
yeah. Re- no, we'll catch the replay. That's yeah. so amazing. But yes, the 1320 and the 13 day cycle and the 20 day cycle is all in here. So I'm super interested to see if what you are speaking and the numbers that you're speaking relate to the birth date within the Zolkin um, or mm-hmm. any or even the energies that are the same. Like number one is called magnetic and it means attraction. Number two is, is, is anchoring, is grounding into the physical. Num- that's of the 13. Number three is activating, creating spark. Number four is defining. Yep. Have it's you got the same? Is that what you it's, have you got? <laughs> it's very similar. <laughs> yeah. It, will you put the name of that book in the chat? Yeah, I make these books, so they're. Um, I'll, I'll put my website and. Um, oh, it's your book? book? Is it your book? Yeah, I make them. Oh, my, it's my. It's my. Um, yeah, it's the Mayan Zolkin, but I'll put. I'll oh. put out. I'll put my website and I'll put out yes. the website. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, because that's super, and I'd love to see your web. What, however, I access you guys. I mean, I've I've got you already, Isaac. Um, yeah. This is so exciting. <laughs> I know. I love it. Oh. I love it. I'm like overcome with like, oh my God, it's in yeah. Oh my God. And I've like, been looking for this forever. Sure. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. Yes. Yeah, and you know what? I, you know, truth be told, I was a bit nervous about this. I thought, well, you know what? I told Isaac at the beginning, I said, you know what? I'm just going to go with the flow. See, I'm going to work with the energies and go with the flow. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? And today's a number 10 day um, in the 13 for, for me, and it's number one in the 20. And so it's all about manifesting yep. and birthing yep. new... Co- hey, you got the same thing. Yeah, physical manifestation, indication of progress toward intention set on the day one energy. Wow. And if you really? follow the energies of two through nine, you start to see the physical manifestation of it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, wow. This is so fun. I think it's oh. part two, part three. Uh, oh my God, this is yeah. exciting. Yeah, we'll, we'll have you on, Michelle. Where are you from? Yeah. Yes, yeah, super I, happy to do that. How did you find out about us? Because I never saw you before. How did I? Well, I saw Isaac. Um, somehow I found you, and then I've, I've signed up for your training on oh. Sidereal because I was the 35 year astrologer who's just shifted over oh, to Sidereal. Welcome to the light side. Right, yes. Yeah, exactly. And I've known about it, but I just never found the Sidereal-ist. It was only Vedic that I found, and I, it was uh, just too complex. Because I'm so in the Maya, and I don't have the time to learn that absolutely. whole new system of Vedic. But Sidereal astrology, you know, I've got all the basics of astrology. Yeah, no, Western true. astrology, just old hat. And I never could fully relate. But, you know, I learned it anyway, because I know that somewhere. And then I found you guys, and I found, found 13moon.com. Oh, um, yeah with a woman in Glastonbury that I told you about. And so I've been connecting with her a bit, but right. um, I didn't find. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, you signed up. Right. Okay. Now. Yes. This is, yeah. this when does that start again? I don't even, I can't remember. On the 14th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yes, but this is brilliant. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, oh, Julie thank you. Like, and Isaac and everybody. I'm like blown away. I mean, <laughs> Wow, that's great. I'm going to look at, I'm going to save this chat when we're done. Yeah, and Melody, you popped in something in the chat? Yeah. I, I popped in something. Well, you, you did, and then Melody did as well. Oh, okay, there you go. Oh, yeah. The I believe this lady in astrology is a reworking for Western. Oh, Western yeah. Here, I'll take you. Oh, oh, oh I yeah. can't unmute you. There you go. Oh, all these people have been working with uh, me and Melody. Yeah, Melody's one of my friends from Canberra. We get together once a week with another friend and just talk all things astrology and charts and energies. And we've known each other for almost three years now, just literally through this kind of a platform. Awesome. Can I play? (laughs) Well, it's nice to see that you put something out because I was back around, you know, 2010 up to about 2013, 14. I was sort of working with those and it, the sulk and things and I was writing down every day, you know, when I was writing down dates, I was writing down the the, the day, the day count things. And I did yeah. that and I kind of 
lost the energy for doing it. So I'm really happy to see you put out a book. That's a workbook. That's excellent. That's really well. Good. This is a you know this is like a a, a yearly journal but i've just um at the ends of creating a code book that has the simple codes of the mind calendar to the more advanced and that's just yeah. about ready and we've got the new year on july 26th so um we've got that a big conference the Pleiades, isn't it that's related to the pleiadian rising yeah. isn't it? when it goes Syrian. above yeah? Yeah. oh oh it's a serious sun helical rising thing oh ah, right yes that's, uh, you know, yeah. interestingly, Pia, the author, she has on her web page, uh, you know, a, book, a store, obviously you can pick up stuff and she has a count. She does a calendar every year. I haven't ever gotten one yet, but she, I think it's basically the ephemeris in a, in a, you know, wall calendar format. So you can do it that way too. Awesome. Um, but here's, here's a little numerology for you. So I picked today's date because it's a 7-7-2020, which makes it a 9-9-9-9 and it's nine days before my birthday. <laughs> yeah, she picked the day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They crashed the skydiving and had to cut it out and then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. By the time you take the the daily planner and the sidereal, and then you take the ephemeris here, and then if we add what you're um, talking about, is it Vasumi? Am I pronouncing yeah, that right? Vasumi. Yeah, Vasumi. Vasumi. Yeah. If we add that, just imagine the richness that you can pull in. <laughs> so you're like me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> What are your sidereal signs? Um, I'm um, well. Uh, on it's interesting. That was one of the questions I had. So on the sidereal sign, I did with uh, what I've got astro gold. It's nine degrees Aries, uh, the sun. But on Isaac's chart, he sent me it was one degree Aries. So I'm not quite sure. If that's yeah. one of the questions I have. Yeah, my chart. So you're, you're with the sky. Yeah. So one degree Aries. So you're a Pisces cusp Aries in sidereal. Um, Pisces cusp Aries, yeah. Okay, and then moon and ascending. Oh, hold on. Um, hold on. Let me just see. I'm just still because that's the nine. That's the the old one. Um, um, moon and Cancer. Um, what do we got? Cusp uh, Aquarius, actually, ascendant. Ooh, yes, progressive Aquarius. thinker. Yes. Yes. Yes, the greater good of all. Yeah, before my time, sadly. It's a bit of a lonely journey, <laughs> as you guys no, all look. know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're coming, people are catching up. Um, Popular, did you put your birth date in the chat? Because I'll do yeah. your Pleiadian one. Okay, so if it's in the chat. Should I put time and place and all that, or nope. just the birthday? Don't need it. Just the birthday. Don't need it. Nope, okay. just need the birthday. Let me make sure I have your... Uh... Hold on, I'll put it in again. Um, with my email. Oh, no, so I see it. I see it. Okay. April 24th. Yeah. Yep. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. And then again, again, you look at this Pleiadian birth blueprint against your um, uh, sidereal chart, and it's really interesting. How can you work with all of these energies? You know? Wonderfully. Yes. Yes. So... Yeah, I can't perceive it like all the different systems all come from source and there are all these different portals of information with different code languages that all reveal the same thing through different codes and magical tools. And it's so cool because the more you get, the more multi-textured and multi-layered and multi-dimensional it becomes as a, yeah. because they all overlay, don't they? They all similar yeah. in some ways. Yeah. 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 Because it's all cosmic. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's a universal language that we're remembering. So all of the different cultures have it. But then coming up from from, you know, I guess the great deluge over and over we go through. The yeah. end of every cycle is a great deluge. So we lose everything. And then no. we try mm -hmm. to reteach it. That's why the Star Lore stories exist. Because those are easy to remember. And those those don't get those don't get crucified because we're just telling fireside stories. But if we come out of the deluge with these books of knowledge, the ones that are holding us under control won't allow us to have these books. So we tell it through stories until we find freedom to then write again. That's been the pattern over and over again. So Right, right. And why, you know, I just, I go back and caution against the idea of don't get stuck on the labels and the numbers. You know, it's, it's again, it's a way to mark 
that energy in your blueprint or that day's effect, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. don't get caught up in that because look at what Ptolemy did to our, our tropical astrology situation. Right. It was putting it in a structured box to try to, you know, be rigid in that. So, you know, just understand how they all interconnect. And it's just because we've left a two day doesn't mean we're done with it. Yeah. You know, you really have to look at, go back. If we're in a 17 day earth energy, how were you able to bring in those first through 16 energies in a, in a connected intertwined kind of way? It's not one to two to three to four. It's, it's spiral. So See, the, it's the not more you kind of settle into that, the better you are. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think I can see it that <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> yeah. I kind of see it that when there's the frequency, it's like each one of us are portals of, you know, consciousness is flowing through us and evolving through us with every breath. And so the tools are just the tools for us to then open up and then acknowledge what is the experience inside of this consciousness and share that through the tools and the tools of the language that we all share yep. um, to just um, express consciousness evolving in us in this moment. Right, right. And each, again, each of these energies have a high vibrational aspect and a low vibrational aspect. And if you stay in that low vibration, you're constantly in that 3D world of competition and greed and separateness. So it's like, okay, wait a minute, I'm getting into that mode today. Let me see what the higher vibration is and try to tune into that as best as you can. Yeah. I've just done a beautiful thing. It started with um, the Richard Rudd gene keys, but not oh. just, but just gone a bit deeper. And you know, that whole thing of the shadow work and dissolving into the shadow and accepting it and loving it. And, it, and, and, you know, the, the seeing that the way up is, is going down and into that and then allowing it to naturally evolve because it does naturally evolve once we accept it. Yep. So I'm just, that's the takeaway I'm getting from, from his work in this moment. It's so beautiful, the, the shadow work. The gene keys. Oh, yeah. I have that gene keys, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. I've been down that rabbit hole, too. Yeah. yeah. So real quick, guys, I'm going to leave the chat. I'm going to leave the meeting on, but I need to eat. So I'm going to let you guys hang out. And then oh, it, talking and stuff. And I'll, I'll, I need to go make dinner, too. So how can we come call this good? And I've got the chat with all the birth dates. I'll, I'll try to work through. Maybe I'll try to pop in one a day, you know, for the next several days. And if I get like to the weekend and I can do more of them, um, yeah. that would be fantastic. So, okay. We're going to call it right. we're... That's fine. Yeah. Cause it's kind of late. We went over like a lot. Yeah. That's how we yeah. go. We don't have many of your time here. But... Well, and maybe we can do a part two and talk about the synastries and do some more birth chart type stuff. And then maybe see how it, how it interconnects with your personal sidereal chart, say, you know, and, yeah. and Vasumi was talking about too. Yeah, I'm going to save the chat. I want to look at Vasumi's book. Maybe we can have her in and we can match these numbers up and see. Oh, God, that would be awesome. Yeah, something, yeah. right? Yeah. And if you do it with a birth chart, it has some relevance. So you get a sense of what it means in terms of your personal story. So, um, yeah, fantastic. Awesome. All right, Julie. Awesome. Thanks, for, thanks for doing this for us, Julie. As, oh, absolutely. I, you yeah. know, I love this. If I yeah. could do this nine to five, Monday through Friday, it would be awesome. I know. Right, right, yeah. All I, right, one last call I, to save the chat. Yeah, I saved the chat, so. Yeah, well, at least uh, added her birthday, so I just right. did it again. Oh, great. All right, everyone. Good night. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. That was so beautiful. Uh, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Julie. See you next week, Melody. Yeah, thank you. You guys are amazing. <laughs> thank you. Oh, Laura, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Okay, go get something to eat. Good night. Yeah, I know, it's late for me. Okay. <laughs> Good night. Yes. Right. Okay. I'll end it.